Married at First Sight season 13. Next episode on episode nine. Next, next on Married at First Sight. I'm sorry. I'm late. Thank you for Alyssa for reminding me. Today's sermon is Brother Gill. Yes, I said it. Brother Gill is talking right. Come on, somebody. Yes. Bro, we don't invited him into the fold now. Uh-huh. Brother Gill is talking right. Hey, y'all, happy Tuesday. I woke up late today, honey. Auntie's advice came over last night and, and shut the house down. <laughs> That's what they used to say in the church. She tore the church up. <laughs> We was hanging out last night talking about dating because I get so many questions from you guys about dating. So I said I have to start doing more dating videos. Honey, auntie's advice popped up. And we talked for about two hours. So if you didn't get a chance to check that live out, it's the next video be below this one or next to this one. Uh, it's about an hour in for auntie's advice. And uh, we talked for a long time, and I'm so glad she did because we have we agree on a lot of things. Okay, so Auntie and I we're going to try to get together and do maybe a live or a review or something together. And if you're not subscribed to Auntie's advice, go on over to Auntie's advice and subscribe to her. She's a real Auntie. Amen. This is what we need. And she brought up that scripture in the Book of Titus. Uh, where he said, let the older woman teach the younger woman. That's what I've been talking about. See, auntie is can teach me, okay? And auntie can teach you. How many of you ladies know that if you are 40 years old and older, you are an older woman? So y'all 40-year-olds out here acting like Fatisha, Vernisha, Quatisha, you need to really check yourself, honey, because we need to get the next generation ready so they don't be 40 and looking like this, okay? So run, run on over to Auntie's Advice, subscribe to her. We gonna try to do a live together. Yes, next on Married at First Sight, season, season 13, episode nine. Be, thank you for your love. Those of you who picked up my book last night, if y'all don't have it, you need this book, okay? So you could pick up the gills of this world. Okay, so next, next. We see, um, I put it on my doc notes here. I woke up late, my Google doc notes here. We see, um, Jose claim, I put claim, claim they, they are definitely falling a little closer in love. I don't know, Jose, because I, I thought nothing could come between you and your 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 board. Did I have the board still up here? Uh, let me see if I get this. Let me add back my financial board. This is another thing we spent some time talking about. Uh, auntie said, oh, here you go. Jose, I didn't know anything could get between you and your, your board, and we was trying to figure it out, and we couldn't figure out what this is, Brother Jose. So I'm kind of surprised that you're saying you feel like you and Rachel is falling a little closer in love. And I just didn't think you could fall anything closer in love because, you know, you have this board up, you walk around with it, you take it from one house to the other, you probably sleep with it over your bed. So I was a little surprised that you are saying, ah, you and Rachel is falling a little closer in love. That's interesting, and I want to see what else is going to happen, okay? And then um, they were doing an activity with the little baby goats on them. I, I, I love goat. You know I'm from Jamaica, child. I, matter of fact, I had some curry goat this weekend. Brett is laying on the couch, and uh, she's saying, and you see Ryan is like, I'm making some blueberries. Do you want some? And she was like, oh, I got those for you. And she um, she was like, I'm feeling some warm, tingly feelings. And I'm like, girl, you're the only one feeling it because Ryan is not feeling it, okay? I think Ryan is a lot like Merla where they're trying to be politically correct, but I know. I know it in my heart of hearts. He don't like her like that, okay? She's not his type. Okay, I'm more of Ryan's type. <laughs> okay. Um, Johnny, we see Johnny and Bao, and they're in the kitchen, and Johnny's asking her, sorry, were you happy last night? 
and you see Bao, she's all excited and she's like, she's like, we're both very, very, very happy. And I'm like, Lord Jesus, did they do the funk? I, I mean, this is really doing the funk, right? Is that what the people call it? Uh, and I'm worried please tell me she washed the kitty, okay? Now, I know some of y'all say, y'all say she said F something, but I didn't see that. But maybe I missed a girl. You know I'm half asleep. Okay, so maybe they did it last night, and we'll see. Is he going to feel better about her? Did he smell it? <laughs> I just want to know. I just want to know. Did he smell it? Okay. <laughs> okay. And back to Jose and Rachel, they're sitting on the floor and they're maybe having snack. And she said, you know, it was a girl's night out. Alcohol was involved and it happened. So I don't know what it is. Is he telling her about the one night stand? Because, you know, she's that type. Her and Michaela. Mm. Okay. I don't know if that's what she's talking about. It happened. What y'all think she's talking about? Then we get to uh, Brother Gil and Sister Merla. Okay, no, no, I'm going to make that last. I'm going to make because that's going to be my, my pinnacle, okay, of the tabernacle. We're going to come back. So, um, did I skip over? Um, okay, so then we see Rachel. Michaela and Zach, and she's like, you act like I just come in here and snap at you. And he, that is exactly what he doesn't need, Rach, uh, Michaela. He don't, he don't need that. And he's like, I, 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 I don't know what you want to do. Zach needs to go to some man training class or speech class. He's a computer dude. I forgot. Yeah, them computer people, them tech people, mm -mm, mm -mm. they know they don't, they don't, they they know to talk to a computer, not to people. Okay. And he's like, I don't know what you want me to do. And here she goes. She said, accept the effing apology and stop bringing it up. Girl, why you got to cuss at your husband in everything you do? Now, I feel like Zach is a lot like me in that my husband, no, we cannot have any unresolved issues between me and Mike. If it's unresolved, I don't work. And the kitty don't work. It don't work. She's like, no, mm, uh -uh, don't work. He already know. Don't you got break, fix it, make it right. Mm, I shut down. I stop talking. Can you imagine sister Jen is not talking? Huh? That's like never, right? Mm -hmm, I do. I can't, I can't. And my husband knows we have to read whatever issue come up. We have to resolve though, ladies, though, ladies, me included, some things it's just real petty and you have to let it go and you don't have to have the final words. And some things you just you just let it go and because there's sometimes I'm still upset and he'll say to me, You're still upset about that. And I'm like, Yeah, I'm still upset, Michael. I'm still upset about it. It has not been resolved. <laughs> and he'll touch me and I'm like. He's like, well, what's wrong with you? It's like, you still didn't apologize. <laughs> okay. Back. So let's get to Brother Gil and Sister Marla. So they're out maybe on a date or so. She has on something nice and pink. And um, he, he says, if we're, he's talking about if we're going to keep going the path we're going, Brother Gil said, I want to feel wanted. I said, okay, come on, preacher. Come on, preacher, right? Because ladies, if you remember, I taught in my, in my roles of a Christian, of a, I said Christian wife, but I'm going to make wife is one of the things you need to do is you need to adore him. You need to respect him. You need to honor him. You need to make him feel wanted. Uh, however, however, uh, when he's providing, protecting, professing, how many of you know it's easy to respect him, honor him, adore him, encourage him, want him but this dirty dusty right this dirty dirty dusty 
talking about I want to be will feel wanted. You dirty, dusty, you that word that I, I, I don't use. How are you going to talk about you want to feel wanted, right? He's not wrong for saying he wants to be feel wanted. But please tell me, sir, why should Merla want you? Let's go on down the list of what a husband is to do for his wife. Come on, Sunday school student. A husband is supposed to do what? <clears throat> Profess his love. Come on, somebody. Husband is to do what? Profess his love. Now, have y'all seen the dusty professing his love for her? He said, this is Merla stunt double. Yeah, he said, you, this sounds so evil. You're so evil. He said, you're a shopaholic. He said, money don't drive me. So that means you can't even provide for her. You want her to stop living her life that she worked so hard to live and you are amazed about how much money she spends but dusty you ain't got no savings <clears throat> you threatened her come on somebody you threatened her with divorce if she don't kiss you you said about her finances it must be nice in other words you're jealous of her you want her to stop Red, buy her red bottoms uh, so you can send you the money mom, to your mama house uh, and she said i already saved come on preacher when she showed you your saving her savings uh, you said oh that's good savings and then you dusty you got the nerve to open up your mouth and talk about oh i send this money home and i can't touch it and poor sister Merla had to say, so we're going to have to start from scratch. Ha, ha. So you can't profess and you can't provide. How? Please tell me, sir. How? Uh, how you want eight or seven kids and you can't even provide for yourself. You're in a little stinky, dusty apartment. Even Merla said the apartment stinks. Even Merla told the friend, I ain't gonna live in that little dirty, stinky, roachy apartment. So you can't provide for yourself, but you want to have eight kids. You're not driven by money. You's a lie, all of us. That's why we get up every day and go work eight hours for it. And if we don't go work eight hours, we're working at home, being an entrepreneur for the money. <clears throat> Why? Like auntie says, uh, like auntie's advice says, check her out, check her out, check her out. The Bible says money answers all things. So now you tell me, you little dusty, how you going to have seven kids and you're broke, busted, and disgusted? How you going to protect her? Huh? This was your chance to protect her. You made a whole dummy looking at her. You talking bad about her. Talk about she like the finer things in life. You dusty, you, you should be excited to provide for her the finer things in life. Uh, you should be trying to figure out uh, how to provide the finer things in life. Uh, you shouldn't be threatening her. You shouldn't be having her talk about stop buying red bottoms. Uh, how you look dusty. You even talked about her lashes. You should have said, you know what, girl, I'm going to take you to go get your lashes done the next time you go. But you look dirty, dusty you. You talking about i want to feel wanted for what what you got that marla want that she don't already have see dear ladies and gentlemen you can't come in my life being a whole dusty you ain't got no money you can't do nothing for me gil can't do nothing for marla and the dusty talking about i want to feel wanted and you know what a lot of y'all crazy women will do will start working and feeling wanted and he can't even put food on your table. He can't even put a roof over your head. I'm gonna make it rich. Okay? And you wanna feel wanted for what? <clears throat> I need Michael. You know why I need him? 
and I want him. He professes every day, said, man, I'm beautiful, you're pretty. He provides for me. I don't need nothing. I don't worry. I have to worry about my mortgage. I don't have to worry about the car. He provides for me and my babies. And he protects us because a part of providing is protecting. Hi, huh? protecting me from the elements, protecting us from being homeless, protecting us from being hungry. But this Dussy, <laughs> Dussy, <laughs> this Dussy can't do nothing for Myrtle. So please tell me why should she want you? Huh? Threatening her. You threatening her. That's like saying I'm going to bust your ass and then you're going to talk about I want to feel wanted. Get the heck out of here, y'all. I got to go. Run over to Amazon and pick this book up. The 23 Tasks of Guys, honey. Those of y'all be making excuses for Gil. You need this book, babes. I love you. I got to go. See y'all later. Bye.